Hello, lovely students. I trust that you're doing well. I'm also very fine. Um, in today's class, which is Introduction to Business Management, we are going to be looking at the functions of management. Now, one of the first function, as we discussed last week, when we went through the lesson nature of management, is planning. And we are going to look at planning into detail. I would want to share my screen with you so that you can be able to follow through as I explain. All right. So in, in today's class, we're going to be talking into detail about management planning. Okay. And at the end of the lesson, you should be able to define planning. You should be able to state the importance of planning. Also identify the types of planning that are available to managers. And then the planning process should be explained clearly by you by the end of the lesson. Right, so in our introduction, we can say that planning is part of management concerned with that part of management, which is concerned with creating procedures, rules and regulations for achieving a stated objective. Now, where the organization is now and where the organization wants to go is catered for by planning. So you are at a point it's planning that will help you to get to the next point where you intend to go as an organization. Okay, so planning helps you to be able to achieve your, your aims. In, in planning, we are saying that it makes it possible for things to happen, which could, which would, but for planning not happen, right? All right, so a lot of um, writers have tried to define planning. Kant and O'Donnell said that planning is deciding in advance what to do, how and when to do it, and who is to do it. Others have also tried to define planning. So you can look through to see which of the definitions um, best suits your own understanding of planning. All right, now we'll quickly look at the types of plans that are available. We have the strategic plans and these plans typically what they are is that they are meant to define the organization's vision, okay? And how the organization intends to make its vision a reality. So strategic plans are made at the top and these plans are supposed to direct the entire organization towards where it intends to go. The next type of plans is tactical plans. These plans um, are the plans that managers plan to adopt to achieve the objectives set in the strategic plan. So there's a strategic plan by the top level. You remember when we talked about the levels of management that the top level makes strategic decisions. So any type of decision that is made at the top has to be broken down to the level of other people in the organization. And that these plans are what we call the tactical plans. Lastly, we have the operational plans. Now there are two major types of the operational plans, which are the single use plans and the standing plans. The main aim of having operational plans is that these plans are short term, okay? And they are developed to create specific actions. So they, they are action oriented. Operational plans are a breakdown of tactical plans and they are action oriented. So they help you to be able to actually practicalize whatever you had in the tactical plans and as well as the strategic plans. Okay. We'll quickly look at the importance of planning. And as you all know, planning promotes cooperation and coordination. That's one we can easily explain the fact that when we plan in an organization, everybody knows what we are doing. So there's coordination. Different departments can work towards a particular goal. It reduces uncertainty. Planning helps you to actually be able to um, face the future with, with some level of surety, right? It encourages innovation and creativity. Management by exception is possible. Economy in production operation and then reduces competition 
anticipate unpredictable contingencies. Man planning also helps us to be able to achieve the predetermined goals. Right. Now, when we talk about planning, it has certain characteristics that will make us know that, okay, this is planning. So what are some of the characteristics? And that is what brings us to the nature of planning. Now, one of them is that planning is a management function, all right? Planning is also goal-oriented. Planning, whenever you are planning, you have a particular aim that you intend to achieve. And that is why we are saying that planning is goal-oriented. When we say planning is pervasive, what we mean is that in every aspect, in every side of the organization, planning occurs. Planning, it means that planning is everywhere. So planning is pervasive. Planning is also a continuous activity. Planning happens from time to time. You don't finish planning. I don't know anybody who can say that I finished planning. At every point in time, you keep on planning. You keep on bringing up new ways of doing things. Planning is also an intellectual process. What this means is that it involves critical thinking. It involves the use of your mind. And then it's also futuristic. I mean, nobody plans for yesterday. We always plan for tomorrow. So it's a future activity. You always plan ahead. Your planning is, is actually forward-looking. So it's a futuristic activity, right? It's also a decision-making activity. Planning is just meant for you to be able to make decisions. All right. So we want to look at the strategic planning process. Now, in every planning activity, there needs to be an alignment of the plans with strategy. When we say strategy, where? I mean, you're looking at the roadmap of the organization. Okay, so in, in trying to plan, in an attempt to plan, you need to first understand the need for a strategic plan. The need for a strategic plan in the sense that in every organization, you need to understand what you intend to achieve, where you intend to go, all right? So that is how you come to understand the need for a strategic plan. You need to also be able to set goals, right? We'll look at them into detail. You need to be able to develop assumptions or premises, then research different ways to achieve objectives, choose your plan of action, develop a supporting plan, and finally implement and review the strategic plan. All right. Now, in trying to find out the need for a strategic plan in an organization, there's something which is very key. And in management, we call that the SWOT analysis. In um, being able to um, perform the SWOT analysis or conduct your SWOT analysis, um, we just break down the various letters in the SWOT. Okay, so the S in SWOT stands for strengths. The W stands for weaknesses, O for opportunities, and then the threat, which is the T, right? Now, in looking at your business and trying to come up with a strategic plan, you need to find out what your strengths are. The strengths have to do with the firm's brand name and resources, everything that you hold um, dear in your organization, everything that you are known for, in that organization. The weaknesses also stand for the low product awareness, poor facility. These are examples of weaknesses that you can have, okay? Everything that you know that um, you're trying to work on is still, is still in progress, work in progress. You can say that it's a weakness. And then the opportunities are those um, openings that come for you as a business. The threats are the kind of things that try to hinder your, your progress and your performance. So the you notice that from the diagram we have here, the internal factors are the strengths and weaknesses. So the strengths and weaknesses, because they are internal, you have control over them, okay? And you are able to um, work on them. If you have strengths, you are able to, you know, you know the strengths that you have. The opportunities and threats are external, meaning that you don't have any control over opportunities that come your way. In the same way, you don't have control over threats that can hinder the progress of your business, all right? So in conducting the SWOT analysis, you try as much as possible to list down the strengths that you know that you have as a business. You also look at the weaknesses. I mean, individuals can even perform this SWOT analysis for themselves. You try to look at the strengths, the weaknesses, and then the opportunities that are open for you to grab, and then the threats that come your way, 
as a result of the external environment. You can't do anything about them. What you can do is to either take, um, um, what you call it, either take advantage of the opportunities or try as much as possible to work around the threat to, to be able to escape the adverse effects that they can have on your business. So that is what we call the SWOT analysis, analyzing your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities and threats, and trying as much as possible to work around them. Right, so we go to the next point, which is setting of goals. Now in setting of goals in management, we have something we call the SMART goals, okay, SMART. And it's S-M-A-R-T. S M A R T. That's smart. All right. And we are we're going to learn today that the goals that you set, if they are not in line with this smart acronym, then there is a problem with the goals. Okay. In setting goals, your S, which is the specific, your specific goals, your the goals have to be um, um specific, they have to be um what do you call it? They have to be able to touch on a particular problem. Okay, they have to be clear, they have to be concise, they have to be tangible, okay? Now you come to the measurability of your goals. How measurable are your goals? Your goals should have targets. You should set targets for yourself and you should be able to work towards those targets. Now, achievable, goals that you set have to be goals that actually are achievable. They shouldn't be goals that are out of the, the skies. I mean, they should be goals that people can work towards. Again, you should set relevant goals. Goals that are relevant are goals that have a direct link with your long-term goal. So the organization has a long-term goal. Every other goal that you set in the organization should have a link to these long-term goals. Again, your goals should be time-bound, meaning that the goals that you set have to have a time frame within which you are working. If you just leave them open, you are likely not to even achieve anything at all. All right. Now, in making planning effective, some of these things can be done. One, initiative taking at the top level. The initiative to plan has to be taking at the top level. Management, I mean, top level management should see the need to actually take, make plans. And this will help planning to be effective. Again, establishing climate for planning. In an organization where there's an, a, a particular climate for planning, before anything is done, plans are taken. It makes it easy for plans to be effective. Participation in planning process. Management and every other person in the organization should be part of planning process. the planning process. This helps every other person to, I mean, work towards the plan. So it makes planning very effective. Now, integration of long-term and short-term plans. We've said that your long-term goals have to be in sync with the short-term plans that you're making. At every point in time, you need to have that integration going on there. Now, there should be an open system approach. People should be able to approach management at every point in time because when the plans are being um, executed, if you want it to be effective, you need to be able to be open enough to explain yourself at every point in time as management to help employees to be able to achieve the plans that you have set. All right, so these are the limitations of planning. When we say the limitations, the, the downsides of planning, lack of accurate information. Usually when you are in, in the position to plan, but you don't have the information needed it makes it difficult for you to plan. Okay, now resistance to change. What it means is that people in the organization, when you try to bring up plans that will help the organization and these people try to resist, it, it limits planning. It makes it difficult for you to plan. Inflexibility, when the organization is not flexible and ready to, to learn new things and, and not dynamic enough. Again, inadequate planning is actually a limitation to planning because when you are, I mean, there's a saying that when you fail to plan, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So whenever there's inadequate planning, it limits planning as a whole. Okay, so these are what we can say as a, I mean, we can mention as a limitations of planning. All right, these are the references for this particular lesson. Um, thank you so much for, 
taking time to watch this video. If you have any questions, kindly let me have them and I'll gladly answer your questions. Thank you. I hope to see you in the next class. Safe and sound. Bye.